Hi everyone, Stepan here. In today's video, we are going to continue the English series with white playing c4 and black playing the Asian court defense, or what is probably a better name when black tries to enter the queen's gambit. Okay, so this move order of playing e6 indicates that black would like to play an early d5 challenging the center and going for a queen's gambit in the event of white playing d4. We are in the queen's gambit. One thing we have to remember, same as for the semi-slav setups, if white ever plays d4 or the slav setups, if white ever plays d4, we are going to transpose to the main lines. And black's idea with d5 is to, as opposed to the semi-slav, and Slav formations where black starts with pawn to c6, black's idea with e6 d5 is to develop the king side as quickly as possible, get the king to g8, and only then get involved into tactical complications, which means that this is far more flexible for black. It's far more useful to develop the king side than to go c6 into a Slav type of setup because black's king safety is significantly increased and black's options are numerous, usually it's considered that e6, d5 setups are way more aggressive for black, precisely for that reason. When black plays e6, d5, one very important theme is introduced, and that's the idea of taking the pawn on c4. Now, as opposed to normal queen's gambit lines, when we have a pawn on d4, our options are different, and taking this pawn uh, is of great significance. So, what black attempts to do with this setup is develop the king side quickly, for example, like this, castle the king, and then get into tactical complications. On the other hand, as opposed to c6 system, c6, d5, which we looked in the previous video, white doesn't have as many tactical opportunities against the black king, because the black king isn't going to be stuck in the center. Also, when black starts with c6, black has to deal with this bishop before playing e6, if that's possible. However, in this case, black is the delaying development of the queen side and will often uh, play the move b6 later on to play a normal queen's gambit idea of developing the bishop. Okay, now what can white do against this? Uh, before I show you white's options, I just want to tell you that this move order can be reached via c5 as well at some point because it is possible to, for black to play c5 after e6 d5 and it's also possible to, for black to start with knight f6 and then continue e6 d5. Okay, now white's options against the Asian court defense uh, are basically the same as uh, they are against the semi-slav position or the Karo Khan defensive system and that's either to Fianchetto with g3 bishop to g2 and then continue development or to play positions with e3. So I've divided this video into those two setups. If I'm going to be honest, uh, playing e3 isn't favorable for white because it is a going to lead to queen's gambit positions, standard stuff, which black will know well, or white will have to play <clears throat> the same setup we looked at in the previous video, where white plays knight c3, e3, b3, bishop b2, knight f3, and queen c2, and then at some point has to play d4 in order to stop black central play. So best case scenario, you're going to have a ready type of position, which we looked at in the previous video, which isn't going to be as aggressive. On the other hand, G3 systems are way more promising and we are going to be focusing on them. Now, G3 gives white actual options to avoid the queen's gambit and is a lot riskier to play against for black than, than E3. Okay, so let's have a look at, at the position. So D5, black is playing the queen's gambit or attempting to. And we start with bishop to g2. Now, black has interesting options. And two things that we can immediately 
well, one thing that we can immediately discard is c5. c5 is going to transpose into the Taraj defense uh, almost always because white is going to be forced to play d4 if white wants to have a good position. So, for example, c5, knight f3, knight c6, castles, knight f6, and now you really don't have anything better but to exchange on d5 and to play d4 and this is going to be our regular uh, Taraj defense if you don't know this you can watch my videos on the Queen's Gambit I've covered that there so we're not going to be looking at c5 because it simply leaves the territory of our opening unless we want to do something extremely inferior so c5 is going to be the Taraj and the other options for black <clears throat> are g6, going into the so-called Gurganidze system or Georgian system. Basically, whenever black plays d5, g6, people call it the Gurganidze, even though it's usually in the Karo Khan defense. And it's going to be interesting, is what I would like to say. As black in the Karo Khan, I never play g6 positions because I don't like having all of my pawns on, on light squares. So if I'm going to do this, I'm going to play e5 and not e6. So I don't think uh, the Gorganidze in this case is such a good option, but it's definitely playable. The second option uh, we're going to be looking at is pawn to c6, creating this Slav triangle, which is the most solid way for black to play. However, after knight f3, black doesn't have to play the regular sort of slab defense setup. Black can take on c4, uh, and by playing c6, black has sort of indicated that b5 is possible, but then our open Catalan ideas come to mind very often, where the knight comes into, uh, into e5, the other knight comes to a3, challenging the b5 pawn, and so on. And they can also, after knight f3, for example, continue bishop d6, which is extremely interesting. And this is going to lead either to a flexible open c-file positions uh, if black should play e5, which isn't a common move, but it's definitely playable. We're going to have a look at that. And black also has the option to play the stone wall with f5. And these are going to be two very different systems. So if e5 we exchange and play knight c3, for example, and if stone wall, then normal stone wall ideas apply. And again, if you haven't, you can watch my video on the stone wall Dutch because that's going to be very important for, for this chapter. And of course, if d4 is ever played, we have a normal stone wall. Okay, now two main moves for black are either to take the pawn, which is going to be the critical line we will be looking at, or to simply develop with knight f6. And knight f6 is by far the most flexible move, where black has many, many different options in this position. Again, c6 <clears throat> is definitely possible going into our semi-slav position from the previous video, so we're not going to be covering that c5 again going into the Tarash, watch my Queen's Gambit videos, uh, d4 which we are going to cover in a separate chapter in this video because it's very interesting and it changes the nature of the position, or simply bishop to e7 keeping things flexible and developing uh, which is very sensible and again black can take on c4 or move 4 as well. One way to punish white for Fianchettoing the bishop and leaving the c-pawn undefended <clears throat> is to take on c4. So this is going to be what we look at first. And this we are going to call and consider the critical line. And uh, black gives up the center when this bishop on g2 has already fianchettoed and thus black takes on huge tactical responsibility because this bishop is simply a monster. And Black would, of course, like to follow this up with b5 later on and save the pawn. However, if b5 is played, then white is going to have a huge initiative. 
And finally, let's have a brief look at our E3 setups before we before we move on. <clears throat> so as I said, if you go knight c3 and don't fianchetto, then you have to continue e3 and play in this sort of fretty way, what we did against the, the Slav and Semislav setups, knight of 6, knight of 3, bishop e7, again c5, we're not going to be focusing on too much, c6 is the previous video, you can see that, it is possible to play b6 or bishop e7 or a6 or bishop d6, there are many ways for black to develop. But we're going to be doing the same setup, b3, bishop b2, and now whatever black does, we go bishop e2, queen c2, and castles, and that's that's our setup. And again, if at any point we play d4, we have just transposed to, to the main lines. Okay, so out of the two uh, different systems for white, in this case, same as in the previous video, I have to be honest and say that g3 will give you attacking and winning chances and e3, knight c3 honestly doesn't lead to an advantage for white. Okay, so the Agincourt defense, c4, e6, let's start with part two of this video. What if black takes the pawn on c4? Okay, so g3, d5, introducing the threat of taking and we of course are not going to defend that. So we play bishop g2, they take the pawn. Now, there are a couple of ways to deal with this position. There is an option to simply go uh, knight f3 here and give up a full pawn. If you go knight f3, then I think this is very promising. Uh, black is going to go a6, preparing b5. Castles, knight f6, queen c2 threatening to take the pawn and b5. Now our usual response in the Catalan is to go knight e5. The only difference here is that we don't really have a pawn on d4, but it doesn't matter. So knight e5. And of course the the rook is attacked. There is nothing better but to go knight d5. And now what we do to undermine this is we go d3 and after uh, c takes d3 we go knight takes d3. And if you want to give up a full pawn, this is playable uh, after something like bishop b7, knight c3. The knight is of course pinned, knight d7, black is going to try to consolidate. And now we take and we say that this bishop is much worse than, than this one. And that eventually the weaknesses on the dark squares are going to be uh, important. Also the c file and the weakness on c7 and the option to undermine with, with a4. That being said, knight f3 isn't the critical move, and if you want to surprise somebody, giving up the pawn with knight f3 is okay. But let's look at the, the ways you can actually take the pawn back and keep your dynamic advantage. So, uh, two ways of, of simply getting the pawn back are queen a4 check and knight a3. Now let's look at knight a3 first, because it's a sideline. This move is recommended by Mikhail Marin in his amazing series on the English. He focuses on this move alone, and I think it's very interesting. <clears throat> it should give white a very promising game. Uh, now, the idea behind knight a3 is knight takes c4 and preventing b5. So black's only good option here is to punish knight a3 with bishop a3. And this is going to be the, the, the main line. If against knight a3 black doesn't take the knight, then simply knight takes c4 and white should have a very pleasant advantage uh, after knight f3, for example, where this bishop is, is, is just amazing. Let's say knight c6 castles, bishop e7, uh, b3, and this position can be reached via many different move orders, but I really believe that this double fianchetto is slightly more pleasant for white. At any point, which may sound strange, uh, we could actually give the bishop up on c6 for a long-term advantage. Our control over c4 is incredible. So, if for example knight d5 then d4 can be played, but we can also choose not to do that and we can continue with something like a4, 
increasing control over b5 and then ideas like d3 knight d2 and if the knight uh, goes away then uh, then bishop takes c6 so knight f6 i really don't think is an option against knight a3 black should take okay b takes a3 and now one of the main ideas of this system for white uh, even though white did not uh, regain the pawn is to cause black issues uh, along this diagonal so our main idea basically is going to be uh, a4 at some point and then either bishop b2 putting pressure on g7 or bishop a3 putting pressure on f8 black has a couple of options uh, black can play c6 to try and blunt this bishop and prepare the defense of the pawn and i don't think this is problematic for white simply go a4 and if e5 well, preparing uh, to defend against bishop b2 then simply queen c2 and if bishop e6 trying to defend the pawn white should already be slightly better the engine says plus 0 0.2 now it changes its mind to 0 0 0 but after this move i really believe that white's position is is slightly more comfortable despite being a pawn down i mean these pawns are weak this diagonal is weak and even though we don't regain our pawn i think it's perfectly playable now the other option for black if not c6 is knight c6 and this we're not going to be taking uh, you can go queen a4 preparing to regain the pawn which is okay however after uh, after queen a4 and something like knight e7 bishop b2 again you you don't want to take the pawn straight away you can you can do other things and taking the pawn of course is playable one thing we should note is that if we do take the pawn and the bishop is already on on b2 then taking could run into b5 where if if we take then then look b8 because the b8 square is defended so we have to be slightly careful about that and finally black can also play knight d7 uh, defending the b8 square again uh, something like bishop b2 knight f6 and queen a4 i don't think is a good move here uh, because of b5 where black just defends the pawn again if, if you take then uh, then white loses to rook b8 so i think it's much more promising to go queen c2 where of course b5 now isn't possible because it's not with tempo on the queen and uh, bishop a8 hangs so after castles queen takes c4 regains the pawn we have pressure down the c file uh, we have excellent bishops and we have the bishop pair and this is basically what white is playing for in this knight a3 line with knight a3 you're preparing to get this monstrous bishop on, on b2 you're hoping to get the pawn back but even if you don't uh, like in previous positions you have enough compensation for the pawn okay now uh, the main way to play this position for white and i think the best way without any complication uh, is to go queen a4 and this is check c6 bishop d7 are possible but are uh, played way less often than knight d7 which actually develops a piece and now queen takes c4 and black has two main responses either c5 or a6 a6 uh, is okay uh, nothing wrong with that black would like to play c5 at some point and then if possible with tempo on the queen b5 uh, later on but there are always problems with this bishop so queen c2 moves away in anticipation of any threats knight f6 knight f3 c5 castles and b5 and this is going to be black's way to punish us for for taking the pawn back uh, for the moment we don't have any good discoveries uh, there there is nothing useful we can do knight e5 black can easily defend or knight d4 or knight g5 or knight wherever so what white should do against this <clears throat> is try to break down, down the structure straight away. Now, you can pause the video here 
if you're not familiar with the positional concepts behind positions like these and try to find the best move for white okay what white should do is a4 and this of course is a very simple solution but it's very powerful and this is a pattern you have to remember in queen takes c4 lines where of course the, the rook is still hanging for the moment so white actually has a threat of taking on b5 bishop b7 is forced basically and now after d3 uh, something like bishop e7 knight c3 queen b6 black is going to be playing the standard semi-slav actually plan of c5 bishop b7 queen b6 where all of black's pieces are, are are good and developed and active and after something like a b5 a b5 rook takes bishop takes uh we can go queen b3 start piling some pressure onto the b5 pawn and black probably defends with knight d5 but the idea will be eventually to develop the bishop play rook c1 and try to put pressure on these weaknesses it's not going to be easy but we do have a slight lead in development for now and this bishop is slightly misplaced meaning that any rook a1 will not be challenged with rook a8 straight away at least and i think white's position should be slightly 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 more pleasant okay after queen takes c4 black can also play c5 which i think is the critical move uh, and black doesn't have to go a6 and b5 black can play this safely with b6 bishop b7 and this is going to be very similar uh, to what white actually does in the e3 knight c3 lines uh, the difference is that the knight is on d7 not on c6 uh, because of that check we gave on a4 so knight f3 whenever we play knight f3 then b6 comes our queen is on c4 we don't have knight e5 because knight takes with tempo on the queen or black can start with knight f6 and after castles black can go b6 it's, it's the same thing okay and what we do again is this doubled fianchetto system so whenever uh, you take the pawn back with c4 your idea should be to to get a double fianchetto if you can so bishop b7 bishop b2 bishop e7 d3 again castles and knight b2 d2 and again with these bishops cutting across the board tactically i feel that this is the best white can get against d takes c4 if you would like to again see mikhail marin's recommendation he is about 500 points stronger than me so he knows what he is doing much better than i do you can play knight a3 and by all means get his books on the english he explains knight a3 on about 50 pages in incredible depth but I, I just think this is easier to play i think it's easier not to give up a pawn if you don't have to and not to double your a pawns because it does come with downsides you do have dynamic compensation but it's not easy okay uh, let's look at the next part uh, so we are going to have a look at what if black plays knight f6 okay so we're, we'll be focusing on the move knight uh, knight f6 and then bishop e7 because everything else we saw will transpose to something we know so what do we do against this well our setup and i'm going to try to keep things extremely simple here is you want to get a double fianchetto so you go b3 bishop b2 and since the black bishop isn't going to be anywhere on this diagonal anytime soon one rule we have to remember is that whenever black tries to fianchetto the bishop we take on d5 okay if you remember those two rules then your position is going to be simple to play and you will know what to do at all times so when black plays b6 if we can we take on d5 and we get a double fianchetto so castles castles b3 now black can play b6 immediately and we will get into that uh, it's not really possible to do anything active in the center before we've developed so against b6 we don't take on d5 immediately uh, it's, I mean, it's playable, 
but I'm going to recommend the move bishop to b2 instead. If you would like to see ed5, there is an interesting game played between Dingliren and Rustam Ponovaryov played in 2016 but uh, when Ding Liren actually won convincingly uh, e takes d5 is possible and that's what Ponomaryov played that's the principled move and that's what we would like to achieve blocking this diagonal but the reason I wouldn't recommend this is because knight takes is perfectly playable and this way this bishop is going to oppose ours and I don't think there's actually anything better but to play d4 here blocking our bishop or playing bishop b2 and then eventual uh, d4 so what i'm going to recommend against b6 is keeping things flexible with bishop b2 okay uh, bishop to b7 e uh, e3 c5 knight c3 and black since we didn't take is going to open up their bishop with d takes c4 b takes c4 and knight c6 however this, to my eyes, is uh, way more pleasant for white, for a simple reason. We can start preparing the d4 pawn break with, for example, queen e2, queen c7, rook f to d1, and rook a to b1 later on. And our rooks are more active than blacks. We, have, we always have the option to go a3 to patch up the b4 square. Black always has to keep an eye on the e5 square uh, with ideas of the bishop opening up to the bishop on b7. And if the bishop on e7 ever leaves the defense of the f6 knight, then we could play something like knight to, to b5 and take on f6. Okay, So I think this is the setup you should go for against b6. Uh, again, c takes d5 is playable but you're going to have to deal with knight d5. If they take with the pawn, again, no problem. Just look at look at the game Ding Liren, Rusan Ponomario. However, uh, c5 is black's main move. Okay, and now bishop b2. Our setup again, very easy to remember. Knight c6, e3, our setup, no problems, b6. Okay, and now Again, it is possible to take on d5, but again, you will be dealing with the same types of issues. So what I recommend that you do is play knight c3 first. And only after bishop b7 uh, to take on d5. Now in this case, taking with the knight is again possible. However, after knight d5, knight d5, black is now forced to take with the queen. And that to me is a slight advantage for, for white. Of course, again, if, if the pawn takes, then we go d4 blocking in this bishop and we're gonna be able to create hanging pawns uh, for black and that position if you don't know it uh, is in my opinion easier for white to play but if you don't know it you should you should look at uh, Fischer's Paske game six I actually had a look at that game this morning okay but queen d5 is also a minor concession because now after d4 and for example rook a to d8 we have to move knight e5 and this is the only reason why i think uh, knight takes d5 isn't as good on move 11 for black now the queen has to do something there is a line here which starts queen takes g2, which actually isn't good for black, but I want to show it to you with the engine, just so that you understand what I'm talking about. I know that you cannot see the evaluation, but the engine says plus 2 for white after queen g2. The idea is, of course, king g2 and knight e5, and after f3 to just take on d4 and have a couple of pieces for the queen. That's not good. Okay, What black should do is queen d6. And now after queen d6, we can go d takes c5, ruining black's pawn structure if taken with the b pawn. And on queen takes c5, we now have the move knight d7. And this, if black doesn't know it, it is just, it's just winning. After queen g5, h4, queen h6, we go rook c1, pressure on the knight. And the line goes on, you, you will need to study this. White wins all the games in Grandmaster play. 
So let's go to that position again. If if uh, c5, I would recommend starting with bishop b2, then e3, then knight c3, and only after bishop b7 you take on d5. Okay, and if pawn takes, no problem. If knight takes, we take again, almost forcing queen takes, and then we play d4. Now, one thing we we always have to consider is if d4 works or not. In this case, it, it does not work because there's a bishop hanging on b7. So, if we do something like if we play a nothing move, does d4 work? It does not work because queen takes is impossible. And on pawn takes, we have knight b5, or <coughs> because knight e5 is a threat, or uh, I wonder if we can take on d4 immediately. I don't think we can, because on queen d4, knight a4, the queen can just retreat. Yeah, but, but we have knight b5. So knight f6 isn't a big deal. Remember your setup. b3, bishop b2, and then eventually taking on d5. Have a look at the lines. There are <clears throat> some complicated theoretical lines you have to know well. So don't just play it like a system opening. Okay, now when black plays this triangle of pawns, which aims to reach several different openings depending on what, what, on what black wants to achieve, but it's usually connected to the semi Slav defense. I don't play this. I play it without e6, but sometimes I will get positions that transpose from, from this. Uh, now we are going to be going with knight f3, and if uh, d takes c4 is played, then we are simply going to castle, uh, or we can play the move knight a3. Uh, going for Mikhail Marin's idea again, where of course b5 loses uh, to knight takes b5, c takes b5, and knight g1. We just pick up the rook, so we don't have to look at that. So if you want to uh, get the pawn back, you can do this and provoke bishop a3 again. And we have just transposed to that position with c6. Okay, so we don't really have to look at this. Uh, however, after dc4, I'm going to, rec to recommend that you castle in this case. And after b5 that you go d3. And this I think is extremely promising for white. c takes d3 is basically the only move. And now we continue with knight e5. And this pattern of knight e5 with pressure on c6 and pressure on d3 is going to be a, a common theme throughout uh, your games and this opening. Now d2 loses for, for black and the reason is very simple. We go queen e2 and then rook d1. Our pieces are just tremendous and there's pressure on c6. Our rook is already in the center and we have ideas like bishop f4 or bishop e3 depending on where the queen goes. It's not really easy to move the black queen. So against knight e5 black really should continue bishop to b7 and now we just take on d3 where white has a more pleasant position despite being a pawn down in my opinion. Black King is completely unsafe. However, if you don't want to give up a pawn, Mikhail Marin's idea uh, of knight a3 is playable. Okay, uh, other options are a transposition to the previous video. If black plays knight f6, we are in the semi Slav and you know what to do. You can watch the previous video. Again, a double fianchetto setup, and it's going to be similar to. What we look at, looked at just a minute ago. Uh, and one difference black could go for, because black ha hasn't played knight f6 yet, is this idea of uh, bishop d6 very quickly. Now, as I said in the introduction, bishop d6 introduces two options, an early e5 or an early f5. We're going to castle and see what black does. If black plays the early e5, I really don't think we are in any trouble at all. If you take, take and go knight c3, black's center is under pressure. And if you turn on the engine, it prefers white by a very narrow margin, but only after the move knight e7. All other moves are actually 
inferior and and a lot worse than knight e7 so after knight f6 for example d4 immediately should give white a pleasant advantage where we're never afraid of e4 because we can eventually try to get our uh, knight into f5 or we can simply play it safe with knight e5 straight away which is my preferred method of, of dealing with this uh, i don't like having my knight on h4 but just remember that e4 isn't a problem knight e5 is is very uh, very standard okay so if they go e5 and we get this position with knight c3 knight e7 now we can uh, go for a very simple attacking plan of going knight e1 and trying to put pressure on the pawn now there is one general rule with central pawns whenever your opponent has two pawns on adjacent files on the same rank they are extremely strong so you what you would like to do is break them open and force one of the pawns to move forward so if you go knight e1 and either of the pawn, pawns advances for example d4 then this bishop is a monster the square is weak and our pieces just became much better so e5 i, I don't think is a problem now f5 uh, is way more interesting in my opinion now if you want to go into a stone wall then d4 at some point is going to lead you into a normal stone wall but there are two different ways to play this position if you don't go into the main lines i would recommend that you play with b3 again to keep our repertoire simple you can play with d3 and you can eventually play both moves i think that's the best setup uh, the, the point is, you're simply preventing any jumps into e4, so black's main advantage in the stone wall, the e4 square, is under our firm control. So after something like knight c3, and castles, and e4, we are actually the ones to break the center and gain a central edge. I, I don't think there's a problem with that at, at all for white, but you can also start with b3 and bishop to b2 avoiding d3 because it's not as if knight e4 can be easily played with our bishop here if they castle trying to threaten knight e4 then you go d3 and let's say queen e7 or knight bd7 again we just prepare the e4 pawn break we break the center and our double fianchetto is obviously better than black's bishops the stonewall bishop completely dead on c8 so in my opinion playing against this pawn triangle if if they go for something normal like knight f6 bishop e7 you know what to do if they go for an early e5 or f5 both positions should be uh, fine for white no issues at all okay uh, next i want to show you a very interesting pattern which is a pattern the move order isn't gonna matter so don't try to concern yourself with specific move orders the pattern is what if black at some point plays d4 trying to block our bishop so what we're going to expect is black playing c5 e5 and a5 trying to get a firm grip on these uh, dark squares so what we are going to be doing is blocking the pawn up with d3 attacking the pawn with e3 and breaking the bind on c5 with a3 b4 so these are our pawn breaks once we achieve both of them both b4 and e3 we're going to get something closely resembling the benoni but uh we are going to have a slightly improved position compared to that because our bishop will eventually be able to come to the diagonal and, and be strong. Uh, so let's have a look at that. e3 first, undermining. Now if this is exchanged, d4 was a wasted move. d4 makes no sense if, if black now takes on e3. So black is going to go c5. Okay, we exchange cd cd you can already see that this looks like a benoni benoni in reverse knight c6 rook e1 okay we have to prevent uh, e5 again it's a benoni so if 
White is playing the main lines against the Benoni. White already has a pawn on e4. Okay, uh, and in this case, black hasn't achieved uh, e5 yet, so we're going to try to prevent it. Black needs to try and play e5. If black doesn't play e5, then no problems at all. a3, b4, and so on. So black usually plays knight d7. Okay, and we're going to start putting pressure on the d4 pawn. Okay, so knight a3, e5 standard, knight c2. Okay. And we should never be afraid of f5. It's way too early in the game for black to commit with f5. And we have too much play. And also, what black really needs to do is gain control over the b4 square. So black is going to play a5. And this is what I told you about. We've achieved our first pawn break with e3. Now we have to go for the second one. Okay, a3. And in most cases, in order to reinforce e5, black is actually going to go f6 solidifying the pawn chain we play for b4 sort of b1 uh, knight c5 is standard trying to push through uh, e4 as white wants to play e5 in the benoni black wants to target d3 and play e4 in the reverse benoni so now b4 a takes a takes knight a4 looking at the c3 square should be extremely pleasant for white in my opinion of course, you have to prevent knight c3, uh, so just block that. And now something like bishop f5, putting pressure on the on the pawn. There are tactical ways to deal with it. You go b5, the knight drops back to b8. And now there's a tactical line that goes knight f takes d4 because of the pawn on b7. I would invite you to study this on your own. I wanted to show you the ideas. Uh, if black plays d4, that means that you're going to be playing the Benoni in reverse. That's what you have to know. If you would like to know more about the Benoni, watch my series on the Benoni. It's going to be very helpful uh, where I cover the ideas in great depth. Okay, <clears throat> let's briefly have a look at the Georgian or the Gurganidze or whatever you want to call it. Let's just call it the G6 system because that's the easiest thing to remember. No problem at all here for, for white, in my opinion. However, you have to play d4 at some point. Now, black is going to have this powerful bishop on g7. We want to blunt it, so don't try to get away from playing d4. So knight f3, bishop g7 castles, knight e7 is the Gurgenidze, and now d4. We have to blunt this bishop so that we can get our bishop onto the diagonal. And of course, the main pawn break for us is going to be e4. Once we achieve e4, we'll have a good position. And black, of course, is going to try to play on the queen side with b6, a5, maybe c5, trying to break this pawn down. So knight bc6 is one of the moves, blocking the c-pawn, which usually indicates that black isn't playing for c5 and that's just a part of this system but simply because it's a part of the system don't be surprised if your opponent plays something like knight d7 and then c5 that's also playable not as good but, but playable okay uh, against castles we're gonna go queen c2 and then we are going to transpose to very similar positions but if they go knight bc6 immediately, we have to guard the pawn. We don't want to overcommit our queen. So here we start with e3. Black castles, knight c3, very standard. b6. And remember our rule. When b6 is played, take on d5. e d5, now b3. We want to go bishop to b2. And just claim that this bishop is stronger than this one. And that's true. One thing we do have in this position after, let's say, a5 and a3, you don't want to allow a4. Something like bishop a6, rook e1, let's say queen d6 or queen d7, queen c2, bishop b2, rook c1. Pressure down the file is going to be incredibly important against this Gurganidze system. Uh, we have an obvious advantage down the c file because there are targets at the end of it and if we can line up our pieces to control the file, uh, that means that either the knight has to move or the knight on e7 is prevented from moving. And if the knight on c6 moves, we can get the e5 square or the bishop, 
when if the bishop ever takes on e5 d5 creates immense pressure on the d5 square so honestly i don't see this as a viable option for black in the asian court defense or whatever you want to call it i think white is always better okay now let's have a look at the other option for white so against d5 again i would recommend that you play g3 but if you don't want to if you don't like fianca doing your bishop because let's be honest any slav or queen's gambit systems blunt your light squared control so if it makes sense anywhere not to play bishop g2 it's against this triangle setup which black could aim for blunting your bishop so e3 is actually a sensible option however it's not possible to get a significant advantage so white will uh, white has two options either knight f3 b3 bishop b2 which is standard or if black plays c5 at any point we take on d5 and go d4 going into the taraj defense okay so those are the options so knight f6 by black now the only way for black to try and uh, use the fact that we don't have a knight on f3 is to try and go for d4 but it doesn't work here so if they instead of knight f6 go c5 uh, then simply c takes d5 e takes d5 knight f3 and d4 doesn't work because of ed cd and knight e4 where white simply stands better with this isolated uh, queen's pawn to play against so this doesn't work uh, and uh, yeah that, that's the only problematic thing you need to know how to solve okay knight f3 and now we're going to look at the move bishop e7 as i said c6 and c5 we will not be looking at it is possible for black to play with b6 uh, and against this we will just go b3 bishop b7 bishop b2 knight b to d7 cd ed and d4 transposing to something that resembles uh, more standard lines however again we can look forward to this pressure on the c file which is why i don't think uh, black should really go for this i think bishop e7 is the way to go and, and trying to develop as quickly as possible it is of course possible for black to take the pawn on c4 now but in positions where we don't have a bishop on, on g3 we, we just take this and one thing you have to remember they're going to try to chase your bishop away with tempo you just, just go a4 and if c5 you break the center immediately with d4 and white should have a pleasant edge especially if you can blockade the queen side with a5 so against this setup with e3 knight c3 i think black's best is bishop e7 where let's achieve our setup b3 castles bishop b2 now again c5 or b6 are possible same as against our g3 bishop g2 setup again if b6 you take on d5 and go d4 pressure down the c file if c5 you again take on d5 and you go d4 where uh, if this is uh, ever supported with b6 you can create hanging pawns or an isolated queen's pawn and if it's not then black is forced to take at some point creating an iqp and you'll have pressure down the c file and you'll be able to set up a blockade against the iqp with knight takes d4 so if you turned on the engine in these positions it's always going to say equal however even though these are perfectly playable for for white and it's possible to win games from here they aren't as imbalanced and if anything the imbalances you get are of a positional nature meaning you might get hanging pawns isolated queen spawn pressure down one semi-open file one target whereas if you go g3 the position can be tactical the position can be mad you can get attacking positions where you can play for a significant advantage very early on and also importantly it's very hard for black to go wrong here especially if black is familiar with the positional ideas behind for example hanging pawns so if you want to win games more often against the asian court defense 
play g3 that would be uh, my my advice okay i hope you got something from the video i know it's long all the videos are going to be long there's a ton of theory there's nothing i can do about it uh, let me know what you think stay tuned for more chess bye bye